Hello and welcome back. Uh, one of the subscribers said that it would be helpful if we had some videos on how to play this endgame in general, and that's correct. So here we go. Uh, the preliminary matter is that in the queen versus rook endgame, the queen has opportunities to give checkmates that a rook can only dream of. I call these microwave mates, and it's important to get familiar with them so that they're intuitive. Uh, for example, in this position, after queen g4, if the, rook, if the king goes into the corner, queen g7 is mate. But if the king goes over there, the queen gives mate on the back rank. Now, this is the kind of position we're familiar with from rook endgames. The two kings are in direct opposition, and the queen delivers mate as if it were a rook. But the queen has a lot more power than that. Even though here it did that on the diagonal, it can do even more. So, for example, here, we give check there. And now we, the, the rook note is controlling the mating square, but the queen can check here and mate there. Uh, if black's on the move, note that this is mate. It would only be a check if the queen were a rook, but the queen controls this diagonal square, and the king controls this diagonal square. And if the queen, if the rook simply marks time, this is mate. Again, the queen, unlike the rook, controls this diagonal square. So the queen has opportunities, microwave mate opportunities, that give it powers to attack on both sides of the board that a rook simply doesn't possess. Okay, now thinking about this uh, endgame in general, there are four kinds of defensive positions that the defender can use. The first is a cutoff defense. Now, if you look at this position, the obvious thing is that the attacker's king is way offside and needs to move toward the center of the action. So we go here, check, king up, move your pieces toward the center of the board whenever possible, take the opposition, can't be bad, back into a rosette in general, when you can make a rosette, it's the best move to make, whether you're the attacker or the defender. So we come up here, we attack the queen, uh, another general defensive principle. If you can attack one of the opposing pieces, do so. Queen check there, king falls back there, and we're now in a third rank defense. This is what I mean by a cutoff defense. The whole idea is that the rook is now going to hold the f-file and try to prevent the white king from advancing forward. As long as the king cannot get to the f-file, it also can't threaten mate. And we all know that this can be very tricky to break down if you haven't studied it. If you're the attacker, your first job is to take away one of the two squares in green with your queen. If you don't do that, you can't break this defense. The defender's job is to keep the rook on the opposite color of the attacking king. Like that, like that. Again, forming a rosette, not a bad thing to do. And here we are in the killing position of the third rank defense. So, that's a cutoff defense. Now notice here that it's just as possible to have a cutoff defense on the fourth rank as it is on the third, which is why I call these cutoff defenses rather than third rank defenses. The queen has taken away one of the two squares and the rook stays on the opposite color from the attacking king. But now it has an option for the second kind of defense, the harassment defense. That's where the rook hides on the diagonal of the attacking king, making it impossible to be forked. Uh, this kind of defense, there's a whole set of videos on how to play the harassment defense as an attacker and as a defender. This is the second kind of defensive position, and I think it's the trickiest one to know how to break down. The third type of defense I call close defenses. That's where the 
Rook and King are close together, no more than a knight's move apart, such as in this position, the Philidor position, but it has white to move, and you should know the procedure for transferring the move, uh, which is to give check there, give check there, and come right back. Uh, this is something to be familiar with. The green squares are whites, are, are blacks, four plausible defensive moves. Everything else immediately drops the rook to one of the forks that are illustrated by the red arrows. But there are other close defenses. So we have cages in which the king and queen together prevent the rook from giving a crucial check. And we have another kind of cage here. Notice again, the whole point is that the king and queen converge on the square d6 so that if black gives a check on e6, the king steps to d6 and black now has to concede space. That is also a close defense. And then we have diagonal positions such as this which immediately uh, transforms into a philidor, of course, if the defender's on the move, like that. But we also have diagonal positions farther away. If white is on the move, back up one square, give check, diagonal position. Uh, another close defense kind of position is the absolute seventh. We have a cage here and black goes there. So we give a check there. The rook falls back, which is the best thing to do here. And now we have a sort of a cage idea, but with the queen dominating the seventh rank, converging on this square and uh, black is essentially dead here. So all of these are close defenses, uh, and so far, I haven't shown you anything new. The fourth kind of defense is the only thing where I think I actually discovered uh, new ground, that was. The fourth kind of defense is a distant defense, where the defender puts the king and the rook on opposite edges of the board, and this actually can work quite well. Um, it's, it's obviously black to move or white would simply give mate on c8. And so he covers that square. This is a distant kind of defense. There are several kinds of positions. For example, there's no reason not to have the rook initially on um, d8, except that it would go lost to a uh, no, it, it would also work on d8. And the idea of the defender is to, um, is to try to keep the two pieces as far apart as possible and then rejoin uh, at an advantageous opportunity. Uh, I was wrong. The, the rook cannot be on d1 because it immediately goes lost to a fork from um, h5. So the four types of defense are harassment defenses, cutoff defenses, close defenses, and distant defenses. Now I do want to mention that in order to create credible threats, the attacking king has to be on the sixth rank to set up those microwave mate kinds of positions. Um, but that means that it's it's important to be very careful about putting both king and queen on, on that rank uh, because it creates stalemate threats. So in this position with black to move, um, it's not a draw, but it almost is. Give check here and give check here because if white takes the, king, the, the rook, then it's stalemate. White has to go all the way over here to break the stalemate threat, at which point the intelligent thing to do is attack a piece when you can. Check. Now the king is way offside and has to come crawling in. And 
black has gotten the king off the edge of the board and gained time. Now, the whole point of the library of position types is that they give you guidelines for how to convert one position type into another until you win. Uh, so, for example, the diagonal position very easily transforms uh, into a philidor or into a fatal cage. So if we go here, well, bring in your uh, king, giving check there, and we're in a philidor position. So we've converted diagonal to philidor. Or uh, in this position, if we go here, there, check, back, and now we're threatening a microwave mate and we're creating a cage there. At this point, the best thing to do is sacrifice the rook with rook to d6 check. So knowing the library of positions, at this point it would make sense uh, to create a diagonal position. Um, just like that, which we can now convert into a philidor or into a fatal cage. Uh, if black tries to do this, then we have that and the rook is lost. The principle of turning one position type into another operates wherever you are on the board. This is a body check position. Uh, in which white is always on the move, otherwise rook takes queen. So we give a check here, and if black falls back, turn a wishbone into a thorn. We're now in a thorn position. So black turns it into a rosette. Remember, if you can make a rosette, you probably should. Or if we move the same starting position to the left, then it's to the attacker's advantage to use an Irva type position such as this. We take control of the C7 square aiming for a cage or a diagonal. And here we are in a cage position Note the microwave mate threatening on F8. So black quite naturally steps out of the cage. And so we go here and up here. And it doesn't matter which of the squares you put the queen on. Now we have an absolute seventh type position. If instead we do king e7, the x-ray attack wins the rook. So what you'll notice overall is that there are a lot of different position types in this library, and the idea of how one plays this endgame is to turn one position type into another changing uh, diagonals into cages, diagonals into philidors, half philidors into philidors, wishbones into thorns, wedges into lightning, lightning into wedges, and so on. Uh, that's the way you play it. The only thing that's actually new uh, that, I, that I feel like was a discovery uh, through this process is the distant defense, and in particular, the javelin position. So I want to spend a little more time on that. So this is an example of an ending uh, where the javelin is uh, crucial to achieving a win. So if we give check here, uh, this is a reasonably safe place to go, mainly because uh, the attacking king is way out of, uh, out of line. Okay, so we go here. The, the king has to come in to make any good threats. So we now have a distant defense. Just walk the king in with the intention that we're going to go straight into a javelin position. Now the whole point is the king is sheltered from checks 
and the queen is threatening mate on a4. So the only effective way to prevent that mate from happening is to cover the square with the rook. And now what we enter into uh, is a process of the queen alternately giving checks from the bottom of the board and from the top of the board and forcing into a triple threat position. So for example, we can go like this. Uh, this is still safe. There, there's, no, uh, there's no fork. We go there. Now we're holding a forking square, so he has to be careful. Now we just still have another distant defense. And the king is out, off, out of uh, line, so it has to come in. And by the way, it goes here rather than here to prevent that. So we go like that. Down here, this is still safe. There, there's no way to uh, get a good fork. The critical move is to switch sides. Now look at all those forking squares. The only safe squares he has are C2 and C4. So if we take that, we go there, and he can go here, and we've got forking squares all over. And there we go. And now we can go there because the checking square is controlled. That's the idea. We make, we control, we, uh, make threats of forks either until we can force the win of the rook or the queen controls the checking square, enabling the king to take, take up a fatal position. So now there's no way to give check from h5, and we have a microwave mate being threatened. So if we go there, the next, uh, this is the uh, next to killing move. Because if he goes to a2, there's a fork on f2. And if he comes here, that's when we do the triple threat position. There's a microwave mate threat right here. And, of course, the rook is threatened. So the only thing he can do is give this check, walk over, and the checking square is controlled. And now... There are two mate threats, one on each side of the board. So there's no way for him to defend against all the threats. Note that going to uh, a5 does not help because queen a7 is still mate because it's one of the microwave mate positions. And king here walks right into the fork. Okay, so the distant defense is the one that is probably most unfamiliar to most people who are learning this defense, uh, learning this endgame. And so it merits a great deal of your attention and absorbing the principle of checking from both sides. I also want you to notice something I don't think I emphasized enough. The killing positions always arise in the distant defense with the king and the rook on the center lines of the board, here and here. So if they start off higher up or farther down, you want to move them toward these two lines because that's where the fatal blow falls.